31 days of full-scale war that Russia has unleashed against Ukraine. The Russian military is shelling western Ukraine. On March the 26th, the enemy fired six missiles into Lviv. It is Ukraine's cultural capital and a city where refugees are actively arriving. Сьогодні було два попадання по об'єктах критичної інфраструктури, один з яких попав на автобазу в самому місті Львові, в житловому кварталі, другий по об'єкту по об'єкту оборонної структури по заводу, який знаходиться так також у житловому масиві. Mayor Andriy Sadovy also commented on the shelling. Це вже другий удар за останній тиждень. А удари чіткі по об'єктах інфраструктури. Руйнування достатньо серйозні. Також ударною хвилею пошкоджена інфраструктура освіти. Це є школа, це є садочок, повилітали вікна. Єдине, що добре, що ніхто не загинув, але дійсно є поранені. According to preliminary data, five people were injured. Sadovy suggested that the enemy was sending greetings to the U.S. President Joe Biden, who at the time was visiting Poland, 70 kilometers from Lviv. Another western Ukrainian town, Dubno, also suffered on Saturday. It is 140 kilometers away from Polish border. Today, on the the two air під час першої Збройні сили України збили ворожий дрон. Під час другої, на жаль, ракета влучила в нафтобазу міста Дубно. As a result, there was a fire, but the rescuers were able to localize it. Damage is being determined. The Russian occupiers have invaded another Ukrainian city. It is a partner city of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, Slavutich. It is located 10 kilometers from the border with Belarus. Славутич від сьогоднішнього дня в окупації. Ми стійко боронили наше місто. Три дні тому ми отримали ультиматум здати без бою, але наші військові, наші нацполіція прийняли рішення відстоювати місто. However, the forces turned out to be unequal. Ми маємо загиблих. Це правда. Наразі підтверджено три смерті. In the morning of March the 26th, enemy tanks moved into the city. The occupiers invaded the hospital. They captured the mayor, but later released him. The residents of Slavutich immediately demonstrated their position to the occupiers. About 4,000 people came out for a peaceful rally in the main square and unfurled the national flag. The invaders opened fire in the air and threw light noise grenades into the crowd. According to the mayor, negotiations are ongoing about the possibility of evacuating people from the city. Russia has fired at the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk with a Point U missile. This is a settlement near the part of Luhansk region occupied in 2014. The shelling has set the house on fire. The mine was also de-energized at a time when miners were underground. They are already being raised to the surface. The head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai, said that the region was hot all day. They were harassed by Grad. They were hitting purposely at the important objects of life support of the region. Food, warehouses, ambulance stations. Two victims are already identified. The data is being clarified as the shelling does not stop. The attention of the whole world is focused on the southern Ukrainian city of Mariupol. The Russian occupiers decided to deport the inhabitants from there. This happened to doctors and patients of the city hospital number one. The occupiers forcibly have removed medical personnel, patients, and other Mariupol residents who are hiding from enemy shelling in the basement of the medical facility in an unknown direction. According to preliminary data, there have been 700 people in the hospital. How many of them have been forcibly taken away, the information is specified.
Among those who remained in the city, the occupiers have started to look for, as they say, Nazis. In particular, they go to the remained apartments and carry out a census. When no one opens, they just break down the door, conduct searches. They ask the locals who the Nazis are, who have served in the armed forces, who is for Ukraine, where their parents live. Since the beginning of the war, the occupiers have kept Mariupol under siege. Constant bombings make population starve. The United Nations have been able to obtain satellite confirmation of mass burials in the city. We estimate that one of those mass graves holds about 200 people. It is unknown at this time whether all of these people were civilians or military. The Russian military continues to prevent residents of Mariupol from leaving unimpeded. Evacuation buses are to depart from the town of Berdyansk, which is 80 kilometers away from Mariupol. However, the Russian side has not let them into the village. In order to leave the territory temporarily controlled by the Russian occupiers for the free territory of Ukraine, people walked to the highway, where the evacuation column was standing for more than a day. In a few minutes, all 48 buses were completely full. However, 60 kilometers away from Zaporizhia, the Ukrainian city where Mariupol residents are being evacuated, buses have begun to be stopped by the Russian military. As a result, there is a multi-kilometer traffic jam. Ambulances with injured children on board are also in line. The occupiers are conducting an in-depth inspection of those who cross the checkpoint. Only in the evening of March 26, the column, which had more than 3,500 people was able to pass the checkpoint. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an unusual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal.